it's good to see you guys. Um, it's been a hard couple days, you know, um, just looking at, at tape and seeing everything that went wrong and where the improvements can be made. Um, I think there's been really honest and open conversations and um, discussion on things that uh, we did wrong, that we could do better in terms of the approach, in terms of uh, the play. Give a lot of credit to Texas State. I just, you know, their intensity and how fast they played and just, um, you know, their their execution, I thought, was um, at a really high level. So all the credit to them. You know, I, I, uh, I feel like today will be um, a great uh, learning opportunity for our team and, and, and an opportunity to, uh, to tell the truth on what happened on Saturday and a, uh, an opportunity to kind of get that blood out and get new blood in and, um, and move on to a really strong Utah team. And so um, excited for that, excited to be around the guys again. It's been up to this point, it's been just us as coaches. Um, let's see, Blake Shapin is going to be out two to three weeks. He has an MCL um, injury. And um, so we're, we're confident and excited for Sawyer and his opportunity. Uh, Garmin Randolph's going to be out for one to two weeks. He has a high ankle sprain. And then uh, Devin Lemire is going to be out for two to three weeks. He has he had a dislocated uh, elbow, and so we're we're working through those injuries, um, uh, and um, you know we'll be with those guys as they kind of rehab and get back into uh, into playing shape and all of it. But excited about the guys we got, and uh, I'm looking forward to uh, their efforts this week. Any questions you guys have? Uh, so. Defensively, the other day, there were some plays where uh, Texas State just had receivers kind of running open. Mm -hmm. You know, as you broke down the film, did you target kind of what went wrong in those plays, and are they those correctable mistakes? Appreciate that. I think they, they are. Uh, a lot of those were matchups, and so we can do um, we can we can have better matchups on those guys. I think it's times we had safeties on receivers and. We can get corners on receivers. Um, and then I think within the technique of all of it, you know, there's times when the splits of that receiver was tight. So that safety is outside leverage, which we're counting on middle field help if it goes vertical, if that's the case. And when, it, when all of it did happen, we didn't have the middle field safety to help. And so it really should be a bracket on that one receiver. That receiver was wide, which happened a couple times, and we're inside leverage. We should be pushing him and using him towards the sideline. I think there was a great play of uh, our corners. I thought our corners played well in man coverage. I feel like our safety struggled quite a bit. And so I think there's a personnel change there as well as a, um, um, you know, if this is what the scheme is, let's use, let's follow the scheme all the way. And if we're counting on help, let's get the help. And so I think those two things when it comes to that. So personnel change of that. Devin being out? Or? No, that's um, trying to get matchups. So uh, corners on receivers. Yeah. Coach, in terms of Sawyer, you talked about the confidence you have in mm -hmm. him starting this week against Utah. What do you see in his limited time against Texas State or maybe even just in camp that gives you that confidence? Uh, appreciate that. He's a confident kid. I, you know, he's going to bring energy, you know, today in meetings and in walkthroughs. I, he's going to. Um, uh, he's going to motivate those guys around him. Uh, there's a contagious uh, spirit about him, and so I appreciate that about him. And, um, you know, we're going to need that, especially early in the week, kind of pick ourselves up off the mat. And, uh, you know, there's a uh, great amount of belief in him with the team. And so they know that uh, with him, you know, we've got a, a great chance. And, uh, you know, they, they feel comfortable with him in situations where a ball uh, has to be thrown and a play has to be made, you know, there's that type of confidence. And so I think that gives everybody else confidence. Uh, which, which conversation was more difficult since Saturday with your players or your staff? Uh, they're both. They're both difficult. Yeah, I appreciate that. I think that, um, you know, I think staff-wise, 
Um, there's been, there's been, you know, you're, you're down in a valley, you climb up a mountain only to find out, you know, the start of the season and there's more mountains. And, um, you know, you're, you're kind of hoping that you're kind of reaching a peak and you're kind of taking off. And for that not to be the case is, um, you know, I think it's one of the, it's one of the things with this sport, much like life, you know? And so I think having that talk with them on, um, Hey, let's, this is what it is. Uh, what, where, where are, um, our faults in it? What can we improve? Um, you know, um, a lot of those talks have, that's what's been the last two days. And then with our team, it's, you know, to, hey, this is what you did. This isn't who you are. Um, I've seen, we've seen who you are. We want to be able to put that on tape. We want to show the world that. And so I think it's kind of holding that together. And um, I, I think there's a ton of leadership in that room that's going to help with that. But both of those are hard. Anytime that there's a disappointment, it's difficult. Spot. Who do you see going there? And Alfonso the Allen will have the first crack at that. What have you seen from him? And Alfonso's got a great knack for uh, being around the ball. I think he's um, he can cover, uh, but he can also blitz and set edges in the run game. Uh, he's got some craftiness about him, and uh, there's a uh, uh, ability to kind of uh, get in and out and make plays when the ball is heading his way. And so sometimes not always the way you draw it up, but he can come away and make a play. And so, I, you know, there's, he's also a great communicator. I think he, he knows ball and studies it and spends a quite amount of time invested in just learning not only his thing, but everyone else's thing. And so he can communicate uh, those things. Coach, in terms of Utah, also mm -hmm. a team that is kind of dealing with quarterback injuries right now with a possibility of three different guys playing. Mm -hmm. Are they similar? Uh, they dip, do you attack them differently? How do you go about playing for that? No, appreciate that. Yeah, I think there's, there's, um, they have the ability with all three of them to run the quarterback, and so there always is that ability. And, and um, I've known Coach Ludwig for quite some time and a lot of respect for him. He's the offensive coordinator there and uh, is a good friend of mine and, um, you know, is very smart and detailed. And, you know, his son is a grad assistant for us. On defense, and so um, you know, I, I I know that Coach Ludd will have them coached up and ready to go, and all of it. I think quarterback-wise, that there's always the ability to run with all three of them. I think if it's one in particular, the run is the lead, you know. And so if he's in the game, we're expecting, um, you know, um, we call them bluff plays, or uh, there's a, a split action, a tight end coming across and looping around and arcing and sealing linebackers with the quarterback. Uh, carrying the ball, following that path. So expecting that, expecting uh, just quarterback design runs, if it's one particular. If it's the other two, then it's it's going to be more of a drop back pass, play action pass with the ability to scramble and or on a third and, and a one or a fourth and a two and a must-have play, the opportunity to run. And so I think you handle them in those two ways. I think if uh, the starter's back, I mean, he's very talented throwing the football and um, has a, um, a knack to put the ball where it needs to be. I mean, balls are out prior to breaks being made and all of it. And so, you know, those that type of timing is what he's been used to. And so if it is him, then we'll have to see if that's where that's at when we play him. Was the running back uh, timeshare uh, against Texas State, were you happy? You want to see more work? Do you, do, you know, I think Richard had seven carries, you know? Correct. Appreciate that. Yeah. Would like to be able to see Richard have a little bit more. And I think that's the initial plan. And I think kind of as we got on, got into it, Dom was having kind of a hot, um, a hot um, couple carries there, a hot streak, so to speak, of falling forward and kind of energizing the sidelines. And so we kind of went with that. Um, and then, you know, um, Richard gave us some uh, on the perimeter runs, particularly but would like to be able to get him more involved. And I think moving forward, we have to do a better job of making sure that it's a little bit more balanced. Do you think with the way the offensive line played, maybe Rick or Dominic uh, yes. is better suited for that? Uh, on, particular Saturday, on this particular Saturday, yes. Dave, was Jonah Burton a surprise, or what did, you, what did you see from him in this game? Appreciate that. Yeah, I'm, um, I've been way impressed with Jonah. I, you know, he's... He's a starter for us. Um, you know, he's seeing time on special teams. He's he's um, 
He's a great um, energetic presence in the locker room and in the weight room. And so, um, you know, has turned, turned his, um, his academic um, kind of career around as well. And it's crazy how that always um, happens that way is that the off the field kind of drives what's happening on the field. But he's someone that's completely turned on right now. And so it's really cool to see. You know, I, there's a couple runs where a couple catches where he catches the ball, bursts, and there's there's defenders trying to close in and get him. And he's got the sideline. He puts his shoulder down, gets the extra two yards or whatever it is. I think something as small as that is just a big message to just everyone that watches that play or everyone's on the sideline at the time that, you know, everything is important here and every yard matters and, you know, I'm willing to sacrifice to get it. And I think that's um, that's been Jonah, and we're going to count on that moving forward, that type of uh, sacrifice. Dave, uh, I know as coaches, y'all, y'all and teams, really, you get very tunnel vision. Mm-hmm. You know, like, this is what we have to do today. Mm-hmm. You know, this is the game in front mm-hmm. of us. Uh, with that, I mean, is it is it – hard to like let the disappointment of uh you know saturday behind put behind you and just you know get excited again about the opportunity that you have this week no i appreciate that i yeah i think it's always hard for to let go i think just period it's hard you know but i think um what helps us in that regard is having our players around us and having our young people and being on the field with them and kind of getting into kind of the routine and so um, if I were to say that it's completely behind us at this point, I, it would probably be a no. Uh, but I would think by the end of today that we're looking forward or totally focused on Utah and the problems and the uh, solutions and all of it. With Blake's injury, how is it going to be not having him on the field? Appreciate that. Yeah, um, I thought that uh, Blake really played well on Saturday and uh, was a warrior. A warrior man and um you know some of those throws he was making i mean he had, the ball was coming out different arm angles and was on the money and um we were struggling to protect him and he, we're picking him up constantly and he's constantly you know um stepping up finding the open receiver getting it to him you know he goes out he gets looked at he gets taped up he comes back in can't protect him, gets injured again. And, um, you know, at that point, my conversation was, we, we're not, we can't protect you. We need to get you out. And he didn't want to come out. And, um, you know, I think a guy that, that totally played green, hard out, completely wide open, so much respect for him. And um, you talk about just all the struggles and everything he went through last year. You know, he's playing with all that kind of as a motivator. And um, it was very emotional, you know. And so we're still going to have him with us, and he's still going to be a motivator for us and a leader. Uh, he was doing that on the sidelines on Saturday night, and so expect that to continue. Coach, is five days enough for an offensive line that struggled to now take enough of a step forward improvement-wise for to go up against a D-line unit that could be – or you could – Top five, top ten in the nation. No, appreciate that. Yeah, I feel like there's um, there was improvement, uh, however little. There was improvement throughout the game. Uh, would love for there to have been much more improvement than what was shown, but there was improvement. I think there. I think a lot of, especially up front, offensive line wise, a lot of the issue was, um, you know, um, this is a college football game. This is really happening these are bright lights these are all that and i think uh for a couple guys uh especially on our right side of the line that was that was definitely the case and i think as it went on it got a little bit better but there's a ton of room to improve and and we must improve and it's going to be demanded that we improve and um you know i i feel like from that hard lesson that we had saturday moving forward throughout the week that we'll see some good improvement. And then I think with Sawyer too, gives us um, the ability to maybe change up the approach and uh, that could possibly protect them in certain terms of the drop back and all that and, and move around a little bit more. And so I think mixing those two, mixing the two uh, uh, quantities there will be a good thing. All right. Thank you guys.